Right. Father, thank you that we have this opportunity to come to worship you this morning. Thank you that we have an opportunity to praise you for all that you do for us. No matter how hard the going gets, we know that you still walk with us every single day. You never fail us. You never let us down. It's us that let you down. Lord, we praise you for this morning. And may you be glorified by what's said this morning. And may it just be about you. In your name. Amen. So what a passage this is. I could have chosen any number of verses from this passage, but I've only chosen a small number. But the whole passage is worthy of a read. So that is your first part of your homework for today. I don't let you off lightly, do I? The psalmist David is praising his God, your God, my God, for everything he means to him. He's using these prayers, these psalms, to praise his God, to tell him just what he thinks about him. He's praising his God for all the love that he's been lavished on him, for every moment that God has walked with him, for every moment that his God has carried him. No matter how hard the going has got, no matter what has happened, his God has never, ever left his side. David is never behind when it comes to praising God. He always does it with all his being. He never leaves anything out. He always gives everything. Every part of him is used in praise, in worship and thanks for all that his God has done for him. You can just picture him now dancing round the room, giving his all, a brilliant smile on his face because he knows who his God is. David is lifting his arms in surrender. He's committing everything to this great God. And he's committing his worship with this whole person. Truly an example to us as we come to our worship. To be willing to lift our hands in the air in praise and surrender. To have that smile as we go along our path of life. Because we know that our God is with us every step. And we have surrendered to him. And we're willing to follow his every instruction. David is a man who knows which side his bread is buttered. He knows who he owes everything to. He knows that he's loved and adored by the only God. I wonder if you were writing the psalm, what would you put in it? What would you have to say about the person who gave up everything for you, for me, and for the rest of the world? What are the words that you want to say to him? What are the actions that you want to take in praise of him? How do you feel about him today? Is he special to you? Is he the person who you love more than anybody else? Surely that's a good exercise for us all, an exercise that we should do regularly. So that's homework number two. An old vicar of mine used to give time praising God for loads and loads of things. He'd always start with four or five things on his list. But then when he got going, the list became endless. Time would just go by on and on. And sometimes his wife would have to come into the office and stop him because he had an appointment. There was never enough time for all that God had done for him. And I'm sure that we could do the same. If we love God and Jesus, we should not ignore verses 11 and 12. And they are the two verses I want to concentrate on for the rest of our time together. Here they say, they will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so as all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. David is saying that God's people will love him so much that they can't help but tell others about him, so that they may be able to do exactly the same. 
if anybody thinks it's all right in the Old Testament, or it's all right for David, he's a special person, or it's all right for the New Testament. But what about here today in 2020 with all that's going on around the world? What is it all right for us as well? Well, a well-known passage in the New Testament is Matthew 28. And that goes, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I have to say that the end of the age still hasn't come. It's got a long time to go, maybe. It's all about when Jesus is going to come back again. But this is talking about all, to all of God's and Jesus' believers. Yes, he's talking to you and he's talking to me. He spoke to the people in the past. He's speaking to people now and he'll continue to speak into the future. I have said this before, and I will keep on saying it. Our Saviour Jesus is crying out for us all to play our part. Our churches are struggling through a lack of people. When I was in the Methodist circuit, alongside the, the Liverpool, um, Liverpool Diocese, you would sit at a meeting in the Methodist places of churches, and you'd hear, this church will see me out. Sadly, for many of those people, it didn't see them out at all. Because in my last five years in the circuit, five churches were closed. They even contemplated closing all the churches in the circuit and looking at just having one building, one church across the whole of the local South District circuit. Imagine you being in that position. It wasn't about money. They had lots of money. It was totally a lack of people to worship there. So if anybody thinks their church will see them out, please think again. We may be in the same position as those in the Methodist circuit, or even in the position of St. Jude's. To me and to Jesus, it's not about church building. It's all about people finding out about Jesus for themselves. Sorry about that, pages back together. Seeing what a difference Jesus makes in lives, how people feel a love and the guidance of a wonderful saviour. The churches have proved that they can cope or to a point without church buildings. We can continue worshiping on Zoom forever. Please not, please, please not. But we are missing out on so many ways. I've said this before, and I'm gonna say it again. I'm not expecting anybody to go and shout on the street corners, have big theological debates with people, quote verse by verse from the Bible. All I'm saying is that we should be telling people what Jesus has done in our lives, what a difference he makes. We so often get into conversations with people and they tell us about what excites them, what they have done, and then that gives us an opportunity to tell them of what excites us about Jesus. We're all good at telling people what excites us in the natural world. You only have to listen round over the last few weeks to all those people saying how great Liverpool Football Club is and even how Klopp is a god. Liverpool may be a good team, but Klopp is no god at all. And he'd even tell you that for himself. So instead of telling the world about our grandchildren or Everton Football Club, why don't we tell them about the person who saved yours and my life? 
the football teams are not a life-saving thing, neither are our grandchildren, but Jesus is. Jesus paid the price for us all, for your sin, for my sin, and he's offering us a place in heaven forever alongside him. Do you want that for the people that you love, for the people that you know? Or do you just want to stay as you are? This is about lives. This is about making sure that heaven fills up and hell is left empty. I will tell everybody straight, I don't want anybody else to go to hell because of me. I want to sharpen myself up so that more and more people are saved before it's too late. I don't want to conduct any more funerals and be left wondering where they stood with Jesus. I want to play my part in others finding Jesus. Jesus gave us that instruction in Matthew 28. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus is not messing around in any shape or form. He's giving you and he's giving me an instruction. It's not a nice question of have a, a question of how about um, should I have a girl for one to? It says go and make Jesus does not give us a choice. But Jesus is with us. He's even given us that Holy Spirit to be with us 24-7. I long for this diocese to be opening more and more churches because the ones we have are full to overflowing. Have you ever thought that if you brought one friend to church every three years, imagine the difference that would make? If you have 20 in your church at the moment, in five years, that church will be 320 people minimum. Where would you put those 320 people? Imagine what a difference that would make to the communities. What a difference it would make to people's lives. Imagine the legacy that you will leave behind. Over the past few years, I'm a sad case. I know. I've thought about the legacy that I am leaving behind me when I go. I don't want a statue. I know people who do, but I don't. I don't want a plaque even on the wall. Long, people long for that to happen in churches. They leave them by the plaque themselves. I don't want that. I just want people to know what I've left behind in people's lives. The difference I have made in people's lives, not for my glory in any shape or form, but for the glory of God. Jesus is longing for you and me to leave that legacy in other people, a legacy in lives changed to come nearer to Jesus. We can only play our part both while we're staying at home or in the wide, wide world. Imagine when you get to heaven and God says, well done, good and faithful servant. Look at all those people that you helped to find me. And here they are alongside and waiting for you. Give it a go. You're never too old. You're never too disabled. I once heard of a person who was a quadriplegic. He never left his bed. And they, they had to start to make appointments for people to come to see him because people wanted to hear what Jesus was saying through this man. This man made a massive difference throughout his world. We can't change the whole world. We can only change our part of the world. So let us make a difference in our world. And if we all make that difference, we can change the world for Jesus. We can all do that. Let us put that love that we have for Jesus out to others 
so that they can be saved. Jesus is calling. Are we listening? Or are we just turning off? I hope not in any shape or form. This is serious business. Lives depend on it. Take that on board, that lives depend on us bringing Jesus to people's lives. He's asking us to give to him those people that we know. Let us be lifesavers, bringing the kiss of life to people's lives. We all have so much that we can do. Let us help by bringing a friend to Jesus. Wonderful gift that would be to, to give to your friend, that gift of Jesus. We have a responsibility to the man who saved us, and that would be the largest praise we can make to the man himself. Imagine the gifts that you would give to people. Imagine those gifts, those personal gifts. So often we receive gifts, which we don't know what to do with. We might have dozens of them already. But here we can give a gift to people and save their lives forever. We have a wonderful opportunity now with our churches changing, our churches reopening. Whatever we do, we have that wonderful opportunity to tell others about this Jesus and just what he has done in our lives. As I've said earlier, I don't want people to have theological debates with people or anything else. I just want them to tell of what Jesus has done for us as individuals and collectively. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for David. Thank you for the praise and worship that he brought so much to his psalms. We praise you that he knew that people had to tell others about you. And we pray that every single Christian would decide that it's about time that we told others about you. That we may realise that without you, people aren't going to go anywhere near to heaven. That people need you to live their lives here on earth as well. And we praise you and thank you that you are going to come again to this earth. And Lord, you're going to split the people up for those who believe and those who don't. But Lord, we praise you and thank you that we have that opportunity to change people's lives, to bring that, be lifesavers in every way so that your glory may shine more and more from wherever we are. In your name we praise. Amen.